You're very welcome back to Ireland AM. From sleeping rough in Phoenix Park to receiving two master's degrees, Jay Bobinak has come quite a long way since moving to Ireland eight years ago. Not only that, he's also befriended Ireland's first lady. And get this, he's set to become an Irish citizen tomorrow. Jay joins us now to tell his story. Good morning. Well, good morning. Thank you, guys. Yeah, yeah, it's a good time. It's a good life. Um, yeah, I came to Ireland actually uh, nine years ago now. Um, I come from Croatia. Uh, the reason I came was economically things weren't the best. I kind of come from, I would say, a dysfunctional family. At, at that time, I think 25% unemployment. Uh, so I left uh, and I came here and my brother was actually here, mm -hmm. uh, but he was uh, he was homeless. So I remember landing. I remember coming with uh, less than a euro in my pocket. And then I joined my brother and we were pretty much staying on the streets for, for about a year. We were staying Phoenix Park and mm -hmm. Stevens Green. Um, a days was pretty much trying to get through it. I remember each night we would go to Grafton Street and we would get some of the cardboard that was out. And then we'd go into the park and put it on the ground and, and just sleep there. And, I mean, as you can imagine, that's, that's a sort of a rough situation. You just get through it. It's cold. You're exposed to the elements and you get woken up at odd, odd hours. But we managed to get through it. And eventually um, we, we connected with, with a charity organization, Tiglin. Uh, they had a bus on O'Connell Street. It was called No Bucks Cafe. It was a big green bus. And then with the help of, of them, uh, we managed to get into transitional housing, which is temporary housing for, it was for young people. And that opened up a lot of opportunities for us, as well as the guidance we, we received from people, particularly Aubrey McCarthy, who's the chairman. So we got a lot of opportunity. And my time in Ireland has been nothing but, but the good time. From the day I came, it was... Yeah. It was all good. But it, it, you're saying that it's been from the day you came, it's all good. But you were homeless for uh, for a year yourself yeah. and your brother mm -hmm. who were sleeping on the streets. Did you expect it to be like that when you got here? Yes, essentially. We were looking for work. You see, the reason we came was, was to start a new life, second chance. But I think, obviously, it didn't work out as smoothly in the beginning. It was... Uh, we joined the library, for example, and we'd go there every day applying for all new jobs that came and going for interviews, but we didn't have any CV. We, we didn't have any work before. We didn't have an address either, really. Yeah, we didn't so, have an yeah. address, didn't have a PPS number. That was kind of a tough situation in that to get a bank account, you need an address, you need a PPS number. To get a PPS number, you need employment. So that was, it wasn't the best, but we, we kept trying. And um, yeah, a lot of good people came into our life. Uh, and we've seen, you know, Ireland is the, you know, thousand welcomes. Mm -hmm. And I think we have, we have seen that. A lot of good people came into our life, gave us encouragement, support. And with that, it, it made all the difference, I think. Wow. Mm. And that was a photo of your twin brother that came up on screen there. Mm. What age were you when you came over here? So I was just a week after I turned 19, but my brother actually came, he was uh, 18. Uh -huh. So he, he stayed here before, four months before I came. He actually worked for a day and bought my, for myself a ticket. And then that's how I came over here. And at, at any point in the first months and year you were here when you were struggling to, to get up and find accommodation and sleeping rough in the trees, did you ever think, oh, no, I need to go somewhere else? I, I, I'm going to go back to Croatia. This isn't going to work out for me. Well, I think doubts come into your head. And I remember months in, you kind of thinking to yourself, there's so much effort been put into this. There's only so much I can withstand because we were sleeping rough. Uh, you do get to access some facilities, and there's a lot of good facilities uh, in the city. One of them is is the place I work with at the moment. It's called the Lighthouse. Um, so you you do get food, you do get clothes, you can get shower, but yeah, the doubt does creep in, mm -hmm. and you do think what you do. But we kind of knew that we we had to make this work. Yeah. There was there was no other way. Now everything sort of changed when you linked up with the charity Tiglin. And then you went to a fundraiser and you met Sabina Higgins. So yeah. how was how was all that for you? That's a crazy story, by the way. Yeah, well, at that time, we were sleeping in Phoenix Park. So we kind of became friends with Aubrey McCarthy. And he told us that uh, he was going to the Aura Sanutran and he invited us. So I suppose a few days before, we would, would have been sleeping across from Aura's. And then we got to... he. 
rented us uh, tuxedos. So we went in as, as guests. And obviously, when you go in, you don't expect. I didn't. I remember walking past Doris in the early days, and it looked, you know, kind of classical architecture. The flag. So I didn't actually know what it was. But when I did go in, it was it was quite a special, quite a good experience. And Sabina and and President Higgins, they were extremely welcoming, extremely encouraging. And uh, I would say, I, I told them that I was their neighbor because I was just staying next door. <laughs> they found it hilarious. And I think, yeah, Sabina is is a very interesting lady, very uh, fun. And I think she uh, maybe saw that in me. And we kind of throughout the, throughout the years we kind of built a good relationship see each other from time to time mm-hmm. different events and she's a good friend of Tiglin as well so uh, I'm, you know it's a, it's a very it's a good part of my journey and i suppose very very special yeah and your journey of course has uh, you've accessed education through that as well and how did that go for you how did you go from um um being on the streets as accessing services and then ending up with two degrees well i think as you were saying when we linked in with Tiglin. Uh, Aubrey actually arranged for us to get into transitional housing, as I said. So that was, you, you get in there and you, you pay a rent and it's a safe place to stay. But also beyond that, there's supports. And some of these supports are employment and education supports. So when when I moved in there, I knew, this is why I came here. So I took a full advantage of it and obviously started work literally same week or week after after moving in there mm-hmm. and then um, yeah there was a, a education assessment which I attended uh, with my brother and the assessor said oh you guys are quite smart you should try this and this so then we applied for I remember the first course was at uh, community college in Kulak and then after I finished that I went for another one in Chikor and then after that there was an opportunity with Southeast Technological University and the guy, Joe Collins, who, who ran that at the time, he was, he gave us an opportunity. So we did that. And then after that, there was another opportunity with, to do masters with them. And then I, I, now I'm doing, I did masters with, uh, SETU, uh, in social work. And then now I'm doing international relations and peacekeeping with Minut. So this kind of came. Two masters. So you've gone from nothing to so much already. It's amazing. Yeah. Well, I think the experience of coming over here, what I, how could I characterize it? It was opportunity. There was doors opened and I, I just took a full advantage of it. And same was the case with employment as well. Mm. With well yeah. Jay, you're a credit. You've two master's degrees. You're becoming an Irish citizen yeah. tomorrow, eight years after you arrived and just can say congratulations. Well, thank you. Yeah, it's a, it's a very special thing. It's a great, I suppose, welcome. Uh, to become f- full member of the society, I, I, I can't wait. Yeah, and yeah. of course, you're, you're still working away with Tiglin in the middle of all of this. Yeah, well, that, that never stops. Yeah. It's, a, it's a very busy time, and we do a lot of different work, and we just keep going. It's, it's, congratulations Thank to you. you. It's an absolutely lovely story, and, and uh, good luck on being a fully-fledged member <laughs> of the Irish community <laughs> now when you get your citizenship. It's lovely chatting to you. Best of luck. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Now,